Picasso, Robert Sheehan, Seth Gable, Sebastian Roche, Pierre Knight, Clemence Posey, and Samantha Colley. Hey, everybody. Thanks. Hello. What was it like getting to tell the story of Picasso? Let's just start with that. You get the, you get the, the email that your cat... Why don't you guys just run this? I'll yeah. just step off here. Look, it was two years ago, guys. Leave me, leave me alone. I watch a lot of stuff. Rain. Um, talk about who you, who you played in the show. I played uh, Dora. Clements, can you talk about... And uh, some of the men. Come on now, oh, ladies. Right. right. Be so demanding, right? <laughs> can you talk about your character? Uh, I play Françoise Gillot, who is a painter. Or is she just a painter? No, she wrote a book about um, she wrote a book about her life. Good for the role, and how much can kind of get in the way, if at all. Oh, jeez. Um, I think I like I like <laughs> cheated, stole whatever he was <laughs> Unless working on. Unless you're sad, and then he just cheats. But um, no, I just think it helps. An impression of any kind. You want to eventually find your own version of that person. You do well because you think it, I think it does help and it does. I, I think it feeds you. Don't you guys agree? I, I went know. to yeah. uh, I went to my character's grave in Paris. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. He was buried in this beautiful <laughs> cemetery, <laughs> and uh, Such a uh, dark uh, I read him some poems. Right, and then I fell asleep on his grave. It was really weird. It was really nice sleep, though. You're, I'm not no, you're still sleeping right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I can, not I can surprised. I sleep though. anywhere. Challenge me, right? I'll sleep right here, live on AOL. <laughs> but uh, no, it was lovely, though. It was nice, you know? It was nice to do that. Where, where is it? Great. Père Lachaise or Montparnasse? Oh, the other one. I Montparnasse? Montparnasse. You guys like know these the... places? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well done. But yeah, if you're but... in Paris, the Père Lachaise is stunning, beautiful place. It looks like a sort of a city of the dead, you know? It's like these big tall crypts, but it wasn't with that one, it was, uh, it was the <laughs> other one. It was fun. The one whose name I can't remember, but it's this, uh, the cemeteries in Paris are beautiful. Before it's not relevant, I, I really want to see a movie where TR is being chased around by the ghost of a character he played. Yeah. Because he didn't get it right. Fact, we, should, <laughs> we should do that on stage right now. And as for my guess, there was absolutely no information about my character, so I had to basically, I play uh, Emile Gillot, Francoise's dad, and I had to take it, you know, off of, you know, as, as TR was saying, you know, you, you know, first and foremost, it's about the, the script. Yeah. Your character is a primary uh, influence, uh, a lot of people say, on the blue period of Picasso, I thought right? you were going to say he's true? a primary arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's a primary arsehole, go on, sorry. That's, that was about it. That's Come my on, own you wanna... uh, neuroses there. Go on. Uh, can you talk about who your, who your character is in it? Yeah, I played Carles Casajemas, who kind of became Picasso's best friend, really, uh, when Picasso went to Barcelona when he was like 18 or 19 years of age. And he met uh, a bunch of young upstart artists in a place called El Cuatro Gats, which is still there. You should go there as well, actually, on this, on this tour of Europe that I'm sending you all on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trip advice so, us. Sort of like so uh, anyway, they became good friends in Barcelona, and um, uh, and then they went to Paris together. Picasso and Casahemus. Casahemus kind of, he kind of ran aground in Paris. He was in love with a girl who didn't want him, and he was addicted to opiates, and he was an alcoholic, and he was very young, and he he came to quite a bad end, unfortunately. I was wondering what your thoughts are were on what drove him to that bad end because the show is somewhat vague about exactly what it was that was is it though? wrong with him. I mean, he's maybe impotent. I, maybe I missed something. Sorry. <laughs> but he's he he. It talks about his impotency. Sure, but impotence was... could be the cause of, a cause of depression. It could be a cause of his opiate yeah. addiction. All of these other things. I, th I think the booze and the opiates didn't help the erections. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you think he killed himself because he couldn't get erections? That's it. I think well, it was the opiates. I mean, that would that would that would be uh, that would be for starters. Yeah, that would. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but he. Um, Where is this going? Yeah. It's no, it's, it's like an abstract a, painting. An abstract. Picasso would enjoy this yeah, conversation, to be honest. He was depressed. He was depressed, <laughs> and he he was you know he was an unrequited. He had an unrequited love and. Uh, he was obsessed with this uh, French model who they lived with called Germaine. And she, uh, you know, she rejected him and he took it really, really badly. So, you know. And Seth, can you talk about... Sure, I play Guillaume Apollinaire, who's a French poet. Um, Fabulous poet. Why, thank you. Did. Wow. Yeah. When, when was that? You know, like a few days. 
<laughs> go in a hundred years. I think it was a Tuesday. Um, sorry, I <laughs> always a Tuesday. Monday's a bit too hectic. Yeah. <laughs> you vote on Tuesdays in America and in yeah. yeah. Um, but he was very cool. I'm, I'm sure Clemence. <laughs> when I when I looked I'm over to do Tr. Search for him. I've got to talk about a pulling knife. You Tr wasn't doing any research on my character, so I missed out. I did some. <laughs> They can't hear you. I don't like the uh, microphone. <laughs> no, no, but you should talk about Max Jacob, who's an, an extraordinary figure in the art world in France, a very, very influential. That is true. I asked you about your research, and you said you did. Max. Not on purpose. Um, <laughs> no, Max, Max uh, befriended Picasso uh, when he moved to Paris. So um, after, yeah. 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 After. And then, and Max, uh, Max was a poet. He was a... Um, painter, he was a writer, uh, an art critic. Um, yes, right? the Piero? actor. That was awful. Sorry. <laughs> oh! Ow. Say it like you mean it. Ouch. Ow. TR does a lovely job in this, by the way. I, most of my scenes were, were with him, and I think he really brings to life a beautifully complex character uh, that exists on so many levels, as does the show, I think. Um, Picasso's work, all of these other masterpieces, and it becomes something else. And I feel like uh, Ken Biller, the showrunner of the show, does a great Picasso is to a degree, but I think also sometimes people know who he is but haven't had... That's the thing we're trying to do. We keep saying we're trying to separate the man from the myth. You know, as well, we, I was listening to, we were listening to Antonio talk about it earlier, and uh, he was saying his generation, when he grew up, um, he said General Franco, the fascist dictator of Spain, died when he was 15, you know, so... I didn't, I didn't realize uh, um, Picasso's political importance, you know, until, until reading the scripts of the show and stuff. Because he was seen as a, 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 a sort of a, an icon of freedom, you know. So he had this re huge political significance to Spanish people because they were, you know, under this totalitarian state. So that was interesting to kind of... Because the show really explores all of that stuff as well, you know? But he explored also Guernica is yeah. one of the most important paintings that he, he painted. And it's really in response to kind of someone who was in exile uh, from a dictatorship. That's but what was, it was very moving, what, was, what Antonio was saying, that is that they adulated Picasso because mm. he was a symbol of freedom. He was in exile. He never came back to... to didn't believe that art should decorate the walls of apartments. He... Mm. He called art an offensive and defensive weapon, and it should be used as... To uh, Malaga, Spain, where both um, Picasso and... It's because he just wanted to get back to that basic innocence that we all have. And so he say, I could have done that as a kid. Of it or reject it. That's what's interesting. It's the same with any piece of art, I think. That's what makes it... No. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's get some questions from our audience. Who's the question? Right here. Silence. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I wanted to know for each of you if you were a real artist. We are real artists. <laughs> Outside of acting. Outside of acting. I'm joking. I'm just... Outside of acting. Good acting. <laughs> I'd say like just crazy performance art, you know what I mean? Like, uh, which is kind of what I do anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I like, I like my form of expression, to be honest with you. Um, but you mean if we weren't actors? If we were what? painters? If we were painters or you're painters, what style? Or sculptures or anything. I think I like sculpture. That's why I'm, I'm better with that than a brush, I think. Yeah. I'd like to make miniatures. So you can sculpt. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> but they're really tiny. <laughs> but they're very hot. Interactive. <laughs> Sculptor. Clemence? Do you know what? The, oh, sorry, go oh, Sorry, Clemence. <laughs> There's a, there's a French uh, artist called Niki de saint Fal who... Um, be shooting guns at canvases? <laughs> yeah, well, that's... That's, um... that's beautiful. No, I, 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 I might... I don't know. At the, at, at, oh, yeah. um, I, I, I'd, I'd like to compose music of some kind, you know? But they say painting or a sculpture. I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think going back to the child stage, I think, is really important. I think it's it's a it's a beautiful. I think I think composing music is sculpting. I know, I know. You know, and is I mean it's all kind of the same. We're, it, it's all trying to take kind of excited about that you've done. Um, any any product? Project. Project. Oh, I thought oh, you said product. I was like, well, I'm the face <laughs> of a. Product. I've got a new, new laundry detergent. <laughs> 
projects. Well, this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is you know, coming out. We're very excited about it. Here to talk about this one. This one's coming out, it was April 24th. Everybody talk about their other projects. Their other yeah, projects. I suppose... Uh, Make National Geographic <laughs> very happy and promote your other projects. Right yeah, now. I suppose, I, you know, I, I'm wildly excited about this coming out because, I mean, this is coming out in like 190 countries or something like that. That's, that's amazing, you know, the reach that this has. So I'm going to say this, right? Uh, because I don't want Nat Geo to be mad at me. <laughs> I'm going to take a long shot here and say that everybody... Ooh, my wife's in it. <laughs> <laughs> see you at the, at the guys, summer. Guys, Sorry. Uh, guys, congratulations. Please give them a round of applause for incredible work. Thank you.